We hear this all too often. We need more students in the disciplines of math, science, and engineering. Joining us now are the members of the University of Arizona Robo Club, Madi Ganji and Gordon Bates. Welcome, thanks for being here. Thank you. And I see you have some toys here, and we will demonstrate these, and we call it the Lego Club. So Gordon, um, what exactly do you have, and what's the objective with these things that you have here? And show me how, what they do. Okay, um, these are Lego NXT Mindstorm robots. Um, we can build and customize the robots for different functions. Like, we have three different ones that we brought today. Um, this one is actually a remote control, wirelessly remote controlled robot. Oh, cool. Um, we use it to play soccer. Uh, the, acceler the accelerometer works. It detects the, the orientation of gravity to the plane of the remote control. So if you tilt the remote control forward, it's just like a ball, like on a slope, it'll, the ball will roll forward. So when you tilt the remote control forward, the robot goes forward. And when you tilt it back, it comes back. And you can turn it at the same time wow. to control it for a game of soccer. Um, so I keep talking about the game of soccer. We used it over the summer in the Lego robot workshops where we had groups of kids come in and stuff. And they would program different ones, and then we would play a game of soccer with, with these at the end. So, Mati, I'll ask you, I mean, what, these are, these are clearly cool things, but how effective is this in, in interesting kids in um, becoming um, engineers? Yeah, uh, that's true, because uh, children probably may think that the engineering, or do, engineers are doing some more complicated stuff, and some of them are afraid of doing that, but uh, bringing, bringing that concept into toys can show them that it's not that complicated if you really go through it. And we can show them the concept of um, computer programming and um, the hardware stuff and the concept of input-output of the sy electronical system or mechanical system, what's the meaning of signals and stuff like that. So. Uh, using this kind of stuff, at the beginning we can bring their excita excitation and then we can show them how they can use this simple concept to understand the engineering and um, we can attract their interest if they are going to be successful in, uh, engineers in the future. So this one, what are we demonstrating with this one? For if, example, we can say that this one has an ultrasound sensor. It? Yeah. Okay. So. And this one called tail tailgater, it will keep its distance uh, constant to the object which is placed in front of it. By sending an ultrasonic signal to, to the um, object and measuring the time of the re reflection. So for example, with this, with this kind of robot, we can tell them this is the sensor of the system and two motors are the actuators that the signal can be measured through the sensor and can be analyzed using this controller and it will be commanded to the motors. And this is demonstration of a whole robot. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, so this also begs a question because this is your field. Um, you know, and I grew up with the Jetsons and Rosie the Robot. And how do you, I know, dating myself, how do you see robots and electronic devices like this in our future for everybody? And I'll ask you that because um, you've thought about that. Yeah, right. Um, and drive it around. Well, there's, there's, there on. are robots in our everyday life all over the place. Um, robots just like detect factors in the environment and they adjust the way that they behave according to those factors in the environment. Um, so there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff like that that exists today. Garage door openers. Um, People's washer machines might run at certain times of day to save them electricity. All that's like programmed and it's interacting with the environment, like according to the time of day or whatever. Um, everyone's heard of the automatic lawn mowers that you program them for your yard, and of course they have sensors on them so they don't run over your dog or. or um, <laughs> and the Roomba. We'll yeah, right. Back, or break yeah. the sprinkler heads or all that stuff. Yeah. So um, I'm going to ask you, Madi, what is it that, I, what, what inspired you to go into engineering? Um, What's your story? Yeah, the, the main thing is the creativity. Actually, in, in, in engineering, you can create something that you are thought about. Or uh, you can mm, have some ideas in your mind. 
And with the tools that you have, you can bring your idea into the reality. So um, to make it useful for your life, and it can make your life easier. So we, we, uh, we can see these days with electronic devices, we have more um, comfortable life using those stuff, such a way that we cannot survive, we can think that we cannot survive even without them now, because we are so dependent on this stuff right now. So I think uh, engineering, the main thing with the engineering is the creativity, and uh, I'm excited about that one. How about you, Gordon? Where do you see this taking you? Um, the creativity also, it gives me a really good set of problem-solving skills. Um, and I can, uh, I can apply engineering skills into my hobbies, like in my, my everyday life. It kind of, I think engineers have a unique perspective on things, um, as, as does any people that are interested in any fields in life in general, not only engineering. You know, musicians think about things differently, or um, television show hosts. <laughs> well, I'm going to stop right there because we are out of time. We have plenty more to talk about, and I welcome you back again if you will. Thank come. you. Cool. Thank, Thank you for you having us.